In fact, scientists have been tinkering in the lab trying to extend life for a long time, and they've come up with a couple of things that do work in animals. Calorie restriction, for instance, basically putting an animal on a diet, seems to kick in a survival response and helps it live longer. And they found a substance in red wine that has a similar effect. Cynthia Kenyon thinks she may have found one of the keys to a long life in a tiny, nearly microscopic worm called C. elegans. So how can we learn anything about human aging from these tiny little worms? I know they look really different from us, but the basic processes of life are very similar at the molecular level. The good thing about these little guys is that they get old and die in just a little over two weeks. OK, watch this. I'm going to show you something really cool now. So this is the normal worm when it's young. So it's a nice, sprightly worm, what I'd expect a worm to look like, quite feisty. Now I'm going to show you the same kind of worms, but just two weeks later when they're old. Wow. So here, this is a yeah, normal worm when it's old, and you can see they're about to die. Oh, wow. So these are really slow moving here. I didn't think you could see aging in a worm so dramatically. OK, so now what I'm going to show you are worms that are the same age, but you'll see that they look much younger. So these worms are the exact same age as the ones that we saw that were almost dead? Yeah. They look much younger, even though they're the same age. And they're wriggling about just like the other ones, huh? So they're like 90-year-old people who look 45. That's incredible. So what's different about these? We've changed one gene. That's all. Kenyon changed one gene in the worm. Genes are made of DNA, long strings of four chemicals best known by their initials, A, G, C, and T. Together, they form the basis of all life on Earth. Kenyon found that there was a gene that scientists call FOXO, which had a central role in keeping her worms freakishly youthful. What FOXO does is it helps the animal to protect and repair its tissues. The reason that it can do it is this one gene controls a lot of other genes. FOXO is a master control gene, meaning it regulates hundreds of other genes, genes that have a profound effect on the worm's health. So you can think of it as a superintendent of a building. So if you have a building, a nice big building, obviously it has to be maintained. What FOXO does, or the building superintendent does, is to keep the building in good working order. The superintendent makes sure that the electricity works and that the roof doesn't leak. It makes sure that the walls are painted by hiring painters. It makes sure that the floors are swept. But the superintendent doesn't actually do all these important jobs. The building superintendent would hire workers to do these different things. What FOXO does in the cell is it switches on other genes. Those worker genes do jobs like enhancing the immune system and protecting the cells from bacterial infection. Some of these genes that protect the cell make proteins that will kill invading microorganisms. Others are switched on that are antioxidant genes. Kind of like a rust inhibitor for a cell. Now, most living things need oxygen, but oxygen can actually be damaging to cells that aren't prepared to deal with it. And yes, there's a worker gene for that, too. I'd say altogether, there are probably about 100 worker genes that have very important roles. And together, what you get is a cell or a tissue or an animal that stays in really good working condition for a lot longer. All those processes are actually directed by the FOXO superintendent gene. Kenyon tweaked one gene in the worms and made FOXO more active. With a more active superintendent, the cells became more resilient than normal, and Kenyon's worms lived twice as long. If there's one gene that dramatically increases lifespan in worm, using these samples, they tested five genes that had already been shown to help animals live longer to see if any of them would extend human life as well. And based on that list, we found one gene that was heads and shoulders above everything else, and that was the FOXO gene. The FOXO gene, that's right. The same superintendent gene that helped double the life of Cynthia Kenyon's tiny worms. Though everybody has the FOXO gene. If you have this FOXO gene, you have a twofold. A gene typically consists of two copies. You get one copy from your mother and one copy from your father. So with FOXO, the area that we looked at, you could have a C or a G from your mom and your dad. The vast majority of us have two Cs. About 25% of us have one G and one C. And about 10% have two Gs. If you have two Gs, you hit the jackpot. 
that's you could have imagined that we have the gene but it doesn't do the same thing but this says it does mm -hmm.